So having done my prep back in the workshop, it's just a case of grabbing my pack, putting that on, grab the rig, and we're ready to hit the trails. And rather than my usual pre-ride faff, we're straight out and straight on to the trails and ready to rock. Just worth thinking about, most people start at the bottom of the hill with their ride and ride up. Rather than go guns blazing, putting the lights on full setting, riding uphill, unless it's particularly technical, you'd probably get away with your light on its very lowest setting, maybe just one of the two lights on the very lowest setting and save all the juice you can for the way down. Added to which, the moment you do switch everything up, turn it up to full whack, you're going to get a real benefit of that sudden extra burst of light and it's going to seem a lot lighter than it would if you'd ridden all the way up with uh, every lumen available to you in action. Before we head out and start hitting the trails downhill, we just want to make sure the lights are pointing in the right place. Sounds obvious but it's easy to overlook. Um, kind of ties in with a lot of the, the learning that we've done over the, over the course of many uh, articles about looking as far ahead as possible. Um, we talked earlier about the headlamp being enough really to climb by and in many instances it is. Just to give you an idea once uh, Rui's got his light off I'm just going to put my headlamp on its lowest setting just to give you an idea of just how much light these things can shed and really at slow speeds on a slow climb you don't need much more. So with our light on my lowest possible setting there's plenty of light there to see to climb. Just remember your bike rolls over reasonable sized bumps all the time as long as you stay a little bit loose on your bike and don't tense up, your bike wheels are going to roll over the smaller stuff that you might miss in a lower light setting. Um, but part of it is just as you climb up your first climb is think about how much you're, not, how much you're gripping onto the bars. Relax your grip a little bit, make sure you're fluid, uh, make sure you're moving around and, and the bike can move freely below you rather than getting all tight and uptight because it's dark and a bit scary out in the woods on your own. Now I've got my helmet light pointing where I want it in terms of pitch, with my head up I can see where I want to see and it's time to just check the one on my bars is pointing in the right place. If I put my light on, it's on its full setting, there we can see kind of looking, pointing down, I've got about five or six yards of really good light and then we're starting to get into the unknown. It's way too close to ride at any speed. By the time I've seen it, it's already happened. Just pitching my light up and checking that most importantly it's pointing way down the trail gives me a really good spread of light and I can see 200 yards down the trail. Don't forget that this is on the flat so the moment my bike pitches up on a downhill even if it seems that it's pointing a little bit high and far down the trail once I get onto a gradient and tilt the bike forward to a sort of a more like a 20 degree slope that's the sort of light spread we're going to get. It's all very well setting your lights up on the flat to be in the right place but you really need them to be good when it's going downhill and if it's uh, too slightly lower by the time I'm pointing the bike downhill I've got absolutely no chance of dealing with what's coming up quick enough and I'm going to be on the brakes quicker than, uh, quicker than I want to be and it's going to be a very stilted ride. So set my lights up nice and high, ready for the downhill sections when I need them most. So when you set your bar light up it's quite easy to get a bit carried away and have it pointing too close, worrying about every detail of what's just in front. Now although that's spreading a nice really bright light six or seven feet in front of me, by the time I've seen that in real terms that's already happened. So I want to make sure my light, certainly when I'm on the flat, is pointing way ahead and straight away although I lose some of the detail on the close range stuff, I've got a lot more time to deal with what's coming at me and to be honest if you need more light than that you need a Labrador. Now don't forget this is on the flat, so the fact that it's pitched up quite a long way ahead isn't really an issue in terms of what's near but nearer by, but remember when the bike leans rotates forward on a steeper section it's going to be pointing ever closer to me and ever nearer to me. So if it's a little bit close to you in terms of focal point of the, 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 the light itself on the flat, by the time you jack the back end of the bike up and you're going downhill, you're not going to be able to see more than about six or seven feet in front of you which is not ideal at any speed and certainly not when it's steep and technical. So if anything, it wants to be a little higher than you perhaps expect it to be for on the level because really when you really need it most is usually when you're going downhill and the bike is actually rotated forward slightly. If you are just running one light, there's the consideration of whether you put it on your lid or whether you put it on your bars. Um, that choice can uh, have some knock-on effects particularly in two scenarios and the first of these is in corners. 
Now obviously when we're riding into a corner, we're not necessarily steering with the front end of the bike guiding around. If we've got the light on the bars, we're tending to follow the line of the beam and kind of follow the turn of the bike with our vision when we're looking. As we know from previous articles and a lot of the learning that we've done, we want to be looking through corners to the exit point. So with my light on my bars, I'm kind of behind the game a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of watching where the bike is going, not telling it where to go. Whereas if I've got my helmet mounted on my, my light mounted on my helmet, as I look through the corner, it doesn't matter what the bike's pointing. It's, it's me that's choosing where the light beam goes. So it's definitely a consideration if you're down to just one light is perhaps whether it's best off on your bars, in which case you're kind of a step behind the game, or whether it's on your head, which enables you to keep one step ahead of the bike. Thinking, looking, and seeing further ahead down the trail, looking to the exit point of a corner, which is hopefully where you should be looking anyway, rather than having to sort of follow your light beam around the corner as the bike turns. So with my bar mounted light on, as if I only had one light and it was on my bars, as I come into this corner, my bike is still pointing straight ahead, not round the corner at all. Now my technique isn't to steer with the, with the bars around the corner, it's to lean the bike and twist my body. So as I lean the bike over, still here, I've got no idea where the trail is going beyond the apex of the corner. And I'm, and I'm going to find it really hard to kind of keep my flow going and keep my speed up. So if we look at the converse of that, it was just with my helmet light on. Okay, so with my helmet light on, which is the weaker of my two, two lights uh, in this instance, as I come into the corner, I'm going to look through it. Now straight away I can see where the trail goes beyond because that's where I'm looking through to the exit of the corner. The negative side is obviously during the day, my peripheral vision will deal with what I'm not looking directly at and I'll still pick up information. But in the dark, that peripheral vision is pretty much useless to me. So I am losing a little bit about what is about to happen because I'm looking further ahead down the trail. So I do have to trust kind of where I've looked before and the memories that I've made as I look down the trail as I approach and actually put a little bit into the, the lap of the gods and faith and trust and commitment into um, remembering what was ahead because I want to look through the corner. Obviously the ideal scenario here would be to have both lights on whereby the bike is pointing one way into the corner, my peripheral vision is working really well and I can see the, the detail of the corner that I need to but my focal vision is looking further ahead and actually dealing with what's going to happen next. Now it's a win-win situation, I've got all bases covered. Obviously, if I was riding one light, it would probably be more powerful than this if I had it on my head. So I might get a bit more spread from the bulb. But ideally, if I can, two bulbs is better than one. And having one on my head, looking where I'm going next, and one to help light up the peripheral vision if it's not pointing them down the trail, would be the ideal scenario. So in a second scenario where we get a bit of a dilemma between if we're running one light between uh, bar mount and helmet mount, is when we get to something a bit steeper when the bike suddenly jacks forward and uh, rotates forward. Here, obviously as I approach with the handlebar mounted light, once we get to the drop itself and the bike pitches forward violently, look how much we lose in terms of further ahead down the trail. So momentarily, I'm going to lose a lot of my um, kind of uh, vision of what's going to be happening next and further down the trail and that can kind of freak the right you out as a rider and lead to panic braking or jabbing of the brakes even if it's an unconscious comfort brake it might lead to a quick tweak. So as the bike rotates forward all of a sudden my forward vision further down the trail is massively reduced. It comes back pretty quick but that moment of uh, kind of losing it can actually uh, be quite negative in terms of uh, the knock-on effect to how you ride the bike and how, how calm and relaxed you're staying. By comparison if I'm riding with my head torch on and, no, and then I haven't got my bar mounted light on, even when the bike pitches forward, although I can't see the, the drop itself, I can look down the drop as I approach, but I want to look ahead. I have to put a little bit of faith again in what I've already seen and not worry about the fact I can't see exactly what's going on because I want to pick my head up and look further down the trail. But the, the positive there is as the bike's pitching over, I don't suddenly lose sight of what's going to happen next or further down the trail, which is arguably more important. Once again, both a bar mounted and a helmet mounted light combination is going to suit me best. 
So as the bike pitches forward, although I suddenly might lose a little bit of the power of what's going on further ahead, I am, I'm not plunging myself into darkness in terms of what's about to happen once the drop is, is ridden. Again, ideal scenario, two lights. Reality, if you've only got one, is probably, in this scenario, I'd rather have it on my head. <laughs>